Welcome back, my fellow duplicates, to the ultimate automation challenge. Now, in the last episode here, we started into creating this liquid sorting system, which is right here in the middle of my base. And the whole idea is to basically use that as my main buffer for the different liquids I have throughout the base. So when one system starts to be used less, it will overflow into some tanks, be it gas or liquid, and then that will eventually just get used somewhere else in the base to do what it needs to do. Since I have so many more sources of water and gas, now I've got tons of geysers. So I've done a little bit of work since the last video here. Um, mostly that's just because of my schedule. So what's going on is I have a lot of overtime these days, so I'm, I'm working a lot. So I'm just playing, you know, like 15 minutes, half hour here and there, and, and then I'll try to record and update you guys on what I've been doing here. So what I got going on in this system here is that I've been able to finish my system for the natural gas. So it's flowing out in this area over here. And it's already filled all of these tanks up there. I mean, look at all that natural gas. So what it's doing is it's flowing into the first tank and it's flowing out of the first tank as well. So that's something to always keep in mind for if you wanted to set up different automation signals to say yes the gas has now reached this point and then we can turn on or off various systems depending on what's going on there I don't know, kind of an interesting idea especially since i just have so much natural gas I'm, I'm not even using up this one natural gas geyser but i have another one all the way up here that i have yet to really get up and running just yet i've also rerouted some of the oxygen that's coming out of this system here so that it's flowing through here and then up into this tank here more or less just kind of continuously flows because it's being used up by these exosuits over here so in a system like this where the hydrogen is working to become self-powering it doesn't really make sense to have an extra pipe to take hydrogen all the way over to one spot and then bring it back it just to power this thing up because um, what it's doing is it's converting that into electricity and that is then creating its own buffer that once it reaches a certain point, you'll see here that the switch flips and then the power is drained into my my main power buffer, I should say. And it fills this up here, which we can see happening, well, eventually, once I suck some power out of this for something. So as long as these systems have buffers and reservoirs, I guess, to kind of fill and, and work with what they got, everything should work out just fine. So the other thing I want to plug into here this gas reservoir is I want to bring in the oxygen source from this infectious polluted oxygen vent. So I've already gone through the effort of, of converting this to clean oxygen and you can see just how much oxygen we have up there. It's like four, over four kilograms now. Um, and that currently is trying to just pipe over here, which isn't really what I want to do. I want to just take that and somehow figure out how I'm going to get it all the way down here so that I can have a main buffer of oxygen and then supply that to my base. What I'd like to do regarding oxygen um, might be a little bit ambitious, but I would like to have more or less a, a line that runs throughout my base or a series of lines. So maybe I have one spot in but several out or something like that. And those are more or less just pressurized air lines that can be used up for uh, exosuits it can also be vented into the area around it and I just have a sensor there so that I try to maintain an even pressure throughout the base you can see in some areas here the pressure is over two kilograms so there's a lot of oxygen in this base where is it all coming from well it might just be this system down here is finally just cranking it out no no it's been working this entire time I knew there was a lot, okay, well, there was a lot of oxygen inside of here, and you can see what I did. I enabled this pump for a while and just kind of pumped some of that oxygen into here, and all that was doing is just to create a vacuum, and what I want to do here, and we're going to see this for the first time and see how successful it is, I want to empty chlorine into this area. So I have chlorine tanks down here because I kind of cleaned it up some time ago. So there's only 20 kilograms in that spot there. Oh, there's some more there. Maybe maybe this will work good. All right, here we go. We'll run this nice and slow. So I have 36 grams in this area. 
So I now have chlorine down here. And then do I have more chlorine in this area? Looks like I'm able, with just that first bottle, I was able to get chlorine all the way up to this level. It's going to take a little while for everything to settle out, but we got chlorine there. Should compress some of the oxygen up top here. And I could probably dig like a little spot out to let that oxygen just kind of settle into a spot. Yeah, look at this. I got chlorine. So you can kind of see where the chlorine is. It's It's going to work its way around. And it seems like I should probably do this number. Let's see if I can see what's inside of here, too. It's just been unexplored for a long time. Oh, Meep's got it. Good job, Meep. Beep. Yeah, buddy. All right, let's zap your brain again, Meep. I think this is the fourth time we've zapped Meep. At some point, he's going to learn. He's just going to, like, I think he'll grow wings and just fly away. We're gonna zap him overnight. Cook him, cook him nice and good. Good morning, Meep. What new skills have you learned this time? What? This machine attempted to alter this duplicate, but there's no improving on perfection. Meep already has all positive traits. You let me down, neural vacillator. That was, what? And that used up my charge. Oh, that ain't cool. Nope. I'm not I'm not cool with that. I'm going to use my mulligan and I'm going to send somebody else there. This was an interesting comment. I just found out that dupes can leave the map on one side and then enter back on the other side. Kind of like kind of like Pac-Man. I'm not sure what we could do with that. It'd be kind of interesting. Here's another interesting one here from Zoltan. He says you can make temp shift plates now out of ice so that's really useful all right lurda come get your brain zapped i'll wait for you don't worry about it oh my gosh where is she today lurda oh never mind i guess my lurda filter is working out well there you go you now have default access to the rest of the base. Congratulations. You've graduated slightly. Oh, Lerda, where are you? Come on now. Seriously, where is she? Lerda. Oh, you're so slow, Lerda. What's your skills up to these days? Athletics. One. <laughs> After all this time, you, you've, been, you've, been, you've been on a training regiment for like the last hundred cycles, Lerda. And you're still only managing athletics of one. I mean, at least you're finally normal. To be fair, her skill level is plus 12. She's just not very athletic. And the Atmos suit doesn't really do her any favors either. All right, what new skills do you have? She's now a rock crusher, plus 10 strength. <laughs> well, you may not be fast, but at least you're strong. All right, so moving on. Let's see here. What else do we got? I decided to get rid of this whole thing over there so I could just have more electric grills. All right, where was I going here? Oxygen. We're going to deconstruct this. Unfortunately, Liam's like right in the... kind of in the wrong spot here, man. Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to cover this up, too. All right, so how am I going to get gas? How am I going to pass this gas all the way down here? What am I going to do? Tell you what, I'll bring it right down here and then just snake it down over there. So the one downside of what this is going to do is it's probably going to bring a fair bit of heat with it. I mean, this stuff's hot, 200 and something degrees Celsius. It might just be a better idea to pipe this through these suits first, and then down somewhere else. No, 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 no. You got a decent idea. Just keep going with it. Don't try to be fancy. Now, there were some comments saying that I should probably space these liquid reservoirs out, and I think that's probably a good idea. Just in case you want to go and, you know, maybe only use these three and use those three, I can kind of change things up. Not to mention maybe an extra tile above this would have been a good idea. I don't know. Different ideas. I think I definitely am going to have to build this even bigger. 
Because if I filled these guys that fast, well, I'm going to have a lot more. <laughs> so inside of here, I have this nice cold area. At least it's cold right now. I also have cold petroleum here that's going to be flowing through. So I have an opportunity to make a heat exchanger for the gas that's coming out of the polluted oxygen vent and, and flowing into the other system here. So here's what I'm going to do. This will be fun. I'm just going to dig up all this right here. And what I'm going to do is create a thermal coupler between this hydrogen here and what's running on, you know, what's running inside of here and the gas pipes that are running down through that area. So how that's going to work is I'll end up kind of closing some things off and I'll be able to deconstruct a tile through the corner like this right there. And that will allow me to change that to a metal tile without actually opening this up. So inside of there, I can create a door that'll allow the thermal energy to either transfer or not transfer. And then on the back side of this, I'll just have a couple of couple of metal tiles like that and then I'll be able to close in the sides once I've converted this to a uh, metal tile behind it so down here I'll just have a loop for the for the radiant pipe so it'll come in here go down and then out so then in this area I'll have an automation wire that's going to be hooked up to that guy right there and then I'll do this number, which is just a gas shutoff, and I'll make that out of steel so that it's nice and high temperature. And then only once the gas thermal sensor is activated here, will I allow it to pass gas into the rest of my system. Interesting. I like it. We'll see how it, how it works. And I can also, since the liquid is right here, I could, I could potentially create a liquid loop that follows the same sort of path and does the same sort of thing if I just wanted to cool it down that way. Looks like this did a pretty good job. I was able to get chlorine in the bottom three, but not the top one, which is fine because that top one is natural gas. So everything down here gets, should get disinfected. Unless something changed. Ooh, let's use a nice gold tile, huh? Nah, we'll use steel. Nah, we're gonna go with gold. All right, gold and steel. Oh, <laughs> so here's what's going on. All my dupes are stuck on this side. I didn't even, I was just like, what's going on here? Whoops. I've trapped five duplicates. That's kind of impressive. Oh, this is the first smooth hatch I've had. It's gonna be hungry though. <laughs> All right, so this should not let any bad gas in. Ha ha, it didn't. Ooh, so now we can see this. Right off the bat, see the temperature here is increasing and we're cooling the area down here. So what I want to do now is close that off here and there and then just set that to, that is the wrong sensor. Set that to a temperature sensor. And then because this is a little bit more expensive, I'm just gonna use, I'll use some wolframite down here. So a little bit of a thermal shift plate just to kind of spread spread the cool around. Okay, so here's another one of these interesting ideas from Hanmax right there. It says, try to use the water filter. It outputs polluted dirt. And then you can feed that to a sage hatch to make gold. Then use the coal to make CO2. Then use a molten slickster to make petroleum. <laughs> All the way to get that back down to polluted water again. Hmm. I wonder how that mathematically would work out. So from a plumbing perspective, just looking at that, I used to have a whole machine, like, calculating form to just do this stuff, but it's a bit out of date these days. One of those things I should update. So that uh, it puts out 200 grams a second of polluted dirt. That's not bad. So we know it can consume polluted dirt. Yeah. And I guess you could just have as many of them as you need because they'll just, you can just breed them. It's 
Which might actually be a good thing to put in here. If I just put polluted dirt, uh, maybe not. You know, I suppose it wouldn't matter. I used to have more of those. But now, look at how much. I got like just loads and loads of dirt and everything. Oh, here's some more chlorine. Sweep that up. Again, if you had a molten slickster, well, it'd have to be kind of hot, but you could make that straight to petroleum. But then, once you have petroleum, well, you can run this guy. And that outputs carbon dioxide, so you can get more polluted water, which means more polluted dirt. And also, it just outputs polluted water. Actually, the carbon dioxide would just be petroleum then. Man, it's a whole series of events right there. My base had become kind of hot. And what the problem was with this, it's like 46 degrees in there, um, is I had adjusted this temperature up a little bit. So it got a little bit warmer. And that was just to keep this liquid from over here from freezing. All right, just putting the finishing touches on this. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it, you know, um, polluted oxygen in there. I think that'll be just fine. I could try to make it hydrogen in there, but you know what? I think, I think it'll work out. Now I just need to give it power and then finish off the rest of its run here. We're going to queue this up to dig. Just see if this goes a little bit faster. If all we're trying to do there is dig and then we'll come back and build the stuff in, over it. There was one um, comment up here that was actually just referring to that. It's trying, trying to dig first and then build later instead of trying to do it all at once. I try to queue my guys up since they have a lot of the jobs already complete to be able to build the ladders and stuff while they're they're climbing and all of that stuff together uh, so long as they're digging through let's say you know uh, igneous rock and the ladders made of igneous rock they should be able to deliver dig and build within the same you know without tracking to a whole nother part of the map so long as their priorities are, are reasonable and I'm using kind of the local uh, priority system thing instead of just using the default settings. Mm, yeah, they seem to do a little bit more digging. But then again, this ladder is probably not made of this light. Looks like I might have an opportunity here with all of this chlorine to like cap this off and then deconstruct two tiles here and let the oxygen flow up and let the chlorine up there just flow down. So if I um, deconstruct this real quick and then build a door up there, I might be able to make that work. I could see where this is handy because then, then I can queue up more things into the same location. And if I have multiple duplicates, they can all kind of just figure out what they're going to do and come on over there and do it. So really I could just use more duplicates in the same space. So it is worthwhile to dig before you actually go and try to build what you want to build there. Especially if you're building multiple things in the, over the same tile. All right, so I got liquid and gas and a ladder. That's all being built there with some digging tasks. So I should be able to, you know, pack in a bunch of dupes to that same spot. Might even be able to get some oxygen out of this little morb guy. Let's see what's in here. Oh, a cool vest and a warm sweater, of course. What? How did Regolith get inside of here? No! Oh man, the shovel brought it in, didn't it? You eat this up. Ugh. All right, so let's try something here. We're gonna get rid of this gas pipe. I'm gonna put a gas bridge right there. And we'll bring the gas in over there. And what I want to do is flow it to the second tank so that when this one's running, they aren't trying to stack on top of each other. I don't know, that worked out just fine putting that stuff over the same tiles that need to be dug up. Yeah, I think it's easy to overthink it. <laughs> Looks like the shovels are still doing the dance. So whatever that latest patch was, it, I guess it didn't fix that. What do you got severe wounds? What? Were you hit by a meteorite? Probably. I don't know how many of those shovels are still surviving. Oh, oh. Whoa, hey, that's a new dance. I think that one's upside down. Hmm. See, now I'm a little worried about this because I got natural gas up there. Might actually have to build a separate door. I don't want to have, I don't want to get natural gas down here because then it could mess me up. Come on, dopes. I want to go to bed. Just finish this one last thing. 
Ha! There we go. So now the oxygen is already here. Doot, 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 doot. What did I try to set it to? Below 30 degrees Celsius? That's probably, probably a little bit even too aggressive there. So now I'm going to let it flow in. Wait a minute. Got a spot of polluted oxygen. Ha! Alrighty, so it's flowing into here, but this pipe is blocked. And now the pipe is unblocked and it's flowing out. Cool. It works like pipes. Which means I can disable that guy. Stop using up my power to pump from the atmosphere inside my basement. <laughs> even though I can still use that. And then I can flow in more. And what we can see here is that the temperature of the gas that's flowing through the pipe, well, it's gotta be down below, below that temperature, huh? Oh, and stop there for a moment. Oh, cause it's trying to cool down. All right, so there it runs for a little bit more. Hmm. Okay, interesting. I'll probably need to double down with liquid just to make sure that keeps working. And I really gotta get this thing set up so that it starts clearing more and more of this hydrogen. Cause right now, <laughs> I've got too much hydrogen. Uh, and I gotta get this thing up and running a little bit better. It's turned into a, a pool. That's not what I wanted down there. Ah, one last thing. Let's knock this out so that I can bring in some more chlorine. So hopefully this should just bring the chlorine down here and the oxygen should find its way out. Now, on the flip side of this, when this starts to run hot, I don't want this to be open. So I might need to put in another sensor where I can get it and then maybe run an ore or something to this. Because when this thing is up and running, it's gonna put out quite a bit of heat. But right now, you know, I can make use of these wheeze wards. I don't know. It's a fun idea. Figured I'd mess around with it. Probably go liquid here in the future, though. And we'll see what else I can do from here. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included the Ultimate Automation Challenge. And if I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar.